Welcome to the first part of CR API pen testing series and this video is all about API discovery and endpoint analysis. So yeah, let's get started. So as you can see, I have my CR API web app running in Docker and I can access it through localhost on port 8888. And here I have this login form, so we need to provide an email and password in order to log in. But before that, we need to create an account. So this is a sign up page and here we have to provide a full name, email, password and phone number. So let's fill up the credentials real quick. And before hitting on the sign up button, I'm going to use this feature inspect element in Firefox. Open up the network tab and then click on sign up. It says user registered successfully and also in the network tab you can see a post request. By opening up the request, we can see the API endpoint which is being used to create a user. So yeah, we have discovered an API. In the request tab, we can see JSON data, email, and all those credentials we typed in, and its format in JSON in the request payload, and the response. So now let's log in back into the application. So our email address was itachi at the rate gmail.com. And in the network tab, we can see a bunch of other requests. Another post request to log in. Let's just copy this endpoint and open up Postman. And here we are going to create a collection in which we will store our HTTP request for this particular web app. So click on new and then click on collection. And now give a name to this collection, let's call it CR API. Now again click on new and create a basic HTTP request. So here I'm going to paste that endpoint I copied. And we can see it was a post request, so I'm going to click on post. And then send this request. And it says 400 bad request. But why? Well, you see, we didn't provide it the body. Let me show you what I mean by that. Go back to the browser and open request tab. And here we can see this JSON data, email and password. So we need to provide this JSON data in the request to get a successful response. Copy it and go to this body part and click on raw and paste that JSON data and then change this text to JSON. Now it's all right, we can send it. And here we got a 200 OK with a token and its type is bearer. This payload is a JSON web token. How do I know that? Well, because this token, as you can see, is separated by dots and it has three parts. First is the header, then the payload and then the signature. We are going to look more deep into it in the exploitation part where this token might be helpful in exploiting authentication stuff. So um, let's leave it right here and move on to the next part. Now the next thing we want to do is to create a variable in collection. So this variable will be assigned a value and then we can use that variable in any request. This enables us to store and reuse values in Postman. So in CR API, I'm going to click on variables. And here we can give a variable name. I'm going to call it access token. Um, I'm going to give it no initial value. Let's just say dash dash. And in the current value, I'm going to basically paste that token we got. And save it. Now in the authorization tab, I'm going to select a type which is bearer. As we know, we got a bearer token. And in this token field, we're going to provide a variable. So our variable name was access token. 
So we can provide that variable with curly braces, double curly braces, and save it. So it's now all set up. From now on, whatever the request we will save in collection will automatically be assigned a header called access token and its value. Also, to save a request, click on the save button and then select the collection in which you want to save. See our API and save. Back to my browser and I'm going to add in more requests in Postman. So let's click on this dashboard one. And we can see it's a get request API v2 user dashboard. I'm going to create another HTTP request in Postman and paste in this dashboard endpoint and method is get and we got invalid token. Well, that's because we didn't save it in the collection. See, the variables only work in a particular collection, so we need to save it. Once we saved it, we can see header, authorization header with bearer token with our variable. And now if we send the request again, we got a response. In the response, we can see ID, name, email, number, picture URL, video URL, and role, user, and available credit. So it's basically information about a user or myself. We can also change the name of this HTTP request. Let's call it dashboard. and the previous one, login. Now it looks more clear and nice. Going back to browser and adding all those interesting endpoints I got. So another get request of vehicles. Going through the same process. So um, there is nothing in here. Let's go to this shop feature. And here we can see this get request to product. Let's copy it and go to Postman and create another HTTP request. Save it in CR API and send this request. And we can see these are the information related to each product with their ID, name, price and image URL. So there are only two products right now and it also shows my credit. I'm going to save it with product name and this one with vehicles. Also, you might have noticed that I can only see API requests in the network tab and not other HTML, CSS or JavaScript requests. Well, that's because I am only choosing to see request of API by clicking on that XHR tab or that option in the network tab. So it's a nice way to filter request out. The goal is to capture all API requests from the features available in this web app. So I'm going to click on this order button and capture this request in network. And here we can see this order endpoint. It's a post request. Again, we're simply going to copy it and add this in our collection. Let's say request name order. In the response, we can see it says product ID and quantity, and it says this field is required. So two fields are required, product ID and quantity. We have to provide that in the body of this request in JSON format. So again, going back to that order request in the browser and in the request tab we can see this JSON data. Now if you send this request it says order sent successfully and we can see our credit is now 80. Back to the browser and now I'm also going to capture this return request. Well, that's something different. We can see a parameter over here, order ID equals seven. So it's also a post request. So we can just copy it and add it in our collection too.
sending this request again and it says this order is already requested for returning let's save this request with the name return order in my profile page we can see there is a feature to change email okay we need to type in a new email id And it says the token has been sent to your email and we can see another API request in network change email with post method saving it with change email name Okay, now we need to access our webmail portal. In the GitHub page, we can see that it is hosted on 80854, so here it is. We have a change email token. You may notice that there are two email change tokens. Well, the first one is the request that we send from the browser and the second one is a request that we send from... So this is the token we are provided with. We can just paste it in here and change email. And here we can see another endpoint or API request, verify email token. And of course, I'm going to save this request too. Well, this is interesting. We did save this request in our collection, but it still says invalid token. Let me tell you why. It's because once we change our email address, we are provided with a new token. So we need to change our previous token we provided in the variable earlier. And in the header tab, we can see the new token we are provided with. And it looks kind of very similar to the previous one. How do we know if it's changed or not? Like in text to text. So we can use a um, tool from Kali Linux. To compare the previous token and the current token, copy both of them and save it in a file. So I have saved uh, these tokens in file 1 and file 2. And now I'm going to use a command, diff, then file 1 and file 2. And this is the difference, which is a really huge difference. Just kidding. As we can see, there is only three characters different and everything else is literally same. But it does prove that we are provided with a new token and that's why we were getting invalid token error in Postman. And that's why in situations like this, Variables are very useful in Postman. Now we just need to change the value of the access token to this current value. So this is it for this video. We saw how to discover API endpoints and capture those interesting endpoints in Postman. The next video will be about how to exploit those endpoints. And if you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.